Christmas is a strange holiday, isn't it? We do lots of things at Christmas that we wouldn't normally do. If you're anything like me, you'll rearrange the entire living room just to fit in this massive tree with its ornaments and lights. Some people even change their entire house, putting decorations inside and out. As we get closer to Christmas, look out for lights appearing in houses and trees in windows. You can tell it's almost the 25th of December, the brighter a town gets. And these people that cover their houses in Christmas decorations will have a special place, either in the attic or in a cupboard somewhere, where they store these decorations for 11 years, 11 months of the year, for just one use in December. And it, they completely change their homes for this holiday. You've probably even noticed at school that things are starting to get a little bit different as we come into December. Christmas is coming and you can tell. Christmas has its own music and sometimes this music starts getting played as early as November or even October, depending on what radio station or store you go into. And we listen to everything from Mariah Carey to Justin Bieber and sometimes some old school songs, as old as your parents or even your grandparents. And some of these songs are beautiful and really make you feel like you're cozied up next to a fire with a warm hot chocolate as the snow falls outside. Other songs are really joyful and make you feel like you're in the most glorious, victorious snowball fight ever existed. And others are a bit strange, to be honest. I mean, who sings about wanting a hippopotamus for Christmas? It's preposterous. And the songs that we sing are really all about Christmas. And it's not just songs that we have for Christmas, we also have movies and TV series that are all just about Christmas. Have you watched anything new this year? I watched a new Disney Christmas movie and it was full of candy cane hot chocolates and had the cutest little baby reindeer in it. But is that what Christmas is really about? I don't think so. Do you know what's most strange though? Christmas, the happiest holiday and celebration of our entire year, happens at the darkest point of the year. It's already dark outside as you can see and you, all you want to do is retreat into a blanket for and eat chocolate and watch movies. But as we get closer to Christmas, the days get shorter and it gets darker and there's less daylight. So why do we celebrate the happiest day of the year in one of the darkest days of the year? Well, it actually is quite appropriate because on the first Christmas night, all those years ago, a star appeared in the middle of a night sky and stars are everywhere this time of year. I have stars on my Christmas tree and they'll appear in Christmas cards and the lights that get put up around town and maybe on your Christmas tree you have a star at the top of your tree and stars are a really important symbol at Christmas because on that very first Christmas all those years ago the star was a symbol of new light and hope that had come to a dark world and that new light was Jesus Many years before Jesus was born, a man named Isaiah wrote about his coming. And Isaiah tells us why we need Jesus, why we need a saviour, and what will happen when that saviour comes. Now I'm going to read from the Bible, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Now those people live in darkness, but they will see a great light. They will live in a place that is very dark, but a light will shine on them. God, you will cause the nation to grow. You will make the people happy and they will show their happiness to you. It will be like the joy during harvest time, be like the joy of people taking what they have won in war. Like the time you defeated Midian, you will take away their heavy load. You will take away the heavy pole from their backs. You will take away the rod the enemy uses to punish your people. Every boot that marched into battle will be destroyed. 
every uniform stained with blood, will be destroyed. They will be thrown into the fire. A child will be born to us. God will give a son to us. He will be responsible for leading the people. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, Powerful God, the Father who lives forever, the Prince of Peace. Power and peace will be in his kingdom. It will continue to grow. He will rule as king on David's throne and over David's kingdom. He will make it strong by ruling with goodness and fair judgment. He will rule over it forever and ever. The Lord of Heaven's armies will do this because of his strong love for his people. Who are these people living in darkness? To the Israelites who first heard these words, the darkness meant captivity. They were captives in a foreign land, taken from their homes. They were waiting and praying for God to set them free. Isaiah wasn't just referring to captive Israel though. He was referring to the whole world, then and even now. We are all lost in the darkness. And that darkness is known as sin. Sin separated us from God in the beginning and it doomed us to spend an entire an entire life away from God. But Isaiah says a child will be born who will challenge all of that and not only challenge but overcome and change the entire world. He will set us all free and create his kingdom. Christmas is the time that we celebrate the coming of this light, the light that is Jesus. As the days grow darker and we come closer to Christmas, I want you to think about the words that I read from Isaiah. I want you to remember that the whole world was once lost in darkness and we were separated from God and from his light and from all the wonderful gifts that we have been learning about. And ever since the start, ever since the first sin, it has been this way. But God loved us so much, he refused to leave us alone in the darkness. God broke through the darkness at Christmas and he sent a light to hang in the sky, a star to guide everyone to his son, the saviour. And the star shows us that Jesus has come. Jesus died for our sins and in doing so, he made a way for us to have eternal life with God and to have all the wonderful gifts of God and to share in the incredible story that is Jesus's life. This Christmas, I want you to keep your eyes open when the sun goes down. Look for the lights that appear outside, for the lights that fill the town, for the lights in your own home. And Jesus came to die for our sins and I want you to remember that. And in doing so, Jesus made a way for us to have eternal life. And he has come to bring his light to the whole world. I want you to just picture Jesus every time you see those bright lights, if it's fairy lights or if it's the town lights, just think about the wonderful gift of Christmas. Before we go, I'm just going to pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, for your awesome love, Thank you for sending your light into our world, however dark it is. Let us remember that your light is always there with us and let your light shine in us so others may see it. Help us share the good news of Christmas this winter. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in the first of our Christmas series, A Star Is Born. Join us next week where we will continue. I hope you have a lovely week. Goodbye.